do that. Okay. You probably did not bring your flight order sheets with you, but you're probably right. I have some extras here if you want one. I'm 22. That's all I need. Okay. There are your position may come up quicker than you think because, like all contests, some people don't show up. So there there are a lot of there are several markouts in almost every discipline. Okay except uh, I'll think scale. But uh, in profile, number seven and eight is not, not here. Uh, in sports scale, uh, flight number 17 is not here. Uh, on the other circle, first, uh, first up in fun scale, or number four, is not here. Number 11 is not here. Uh, half A, there's two that are not here. So pay attention tomorrow to the flight order, OK? Now, tomorrow the weather is supposed to be great. Sunday is supposed to be okay, okay, if you consider 8 to 10 on our okay for scale. So what we are going to do, Richard and I spent a lot of time talking about this today, and uh, we've always, scale has always been put on the, the same, uh, same routine as, as stunt, where you fly different circles under different judges, da 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 what we're going to do this year, we think this is the fairest way because Saturday's weather and Sunday's weather will not be the same, I can guarantee you that. Okay, so whatever discipline you're flying in, you will fly that particular discipline in that circle Saturday and Sunday. You will fly under the same judges in that circle both Saturday and Sunday. You will go through the list the same order on Saturday will reverse it on Sunday. So those people who flew last on Saturday will be first up on Sunday. Because if we reverse the order during the daytime, say you flew at 12 o'clock, then you've got to turn around and fly at 1 o'clock. Well, we know in the middle of the day that the wind is not really the best, okay? So what we're trying to do is give everybody the best chance of having good air. So, we will fly the complete order as listed on Saturday. Sunday, we'll flip it. You fly the same circle, same set of judges. Okay? Any questions about okay. that? Yeah, I do. You're saying they're going to, the same judges are going to score you Saturday both flights? Yes. And same Sunday both flights? Yes. And you got to take the highest two scores or one score from each day? You are going to take the best two scores of the four. Not from... One each, one each set of judges, but the two judges. Two judges. Whatever you're, if you're going to fly four, you're going to fly four flights and the same set two of days. judges. Two days. Yeah. Are so there, are the judges? Switched? Judges are not moving. You're going to fly and say, there's no reason to switch the judges. Here's the thinking behind this. We know that two sets of judges are not going to score. They'll score consistently, but they won't score the same. So to say, well, you, you had an advantage over me because you were in the circle that they were handing out presents, and over here I was flying under somebody who, who's from Russia, okay? So that, okay, John. In, in that case, there really is no need to, to fly under that. So you're going to fly under the same judges. So whoever you fly against in profile, say, you're just competing against them in profile and the same set of judges. Both of them are going to have the same all the way through. There will be no, there will be no excuse of saying, well, I flew under somebody that was more strict. They do that in stunt. I can go to a stunt circle at the Nats, and I can look at who's judging out there, and I know who, who I'm going to get easy scores from and who I'm going to get a little bit tougher scores from. But you're on stunt. You're, you're just competing against your guys on that circle. Your guys, that's all. In one day. And it doesn't make a difference whether you're two or four. But anyway, with this, whether the weather comes into play, the it's judges the will not come into play. You'll, you'll fly under the same judges both days, same circle both days. We'll just flip the order from Saturday to Sunday. So Saturday, you know, if for some reason the weather starts to turn something like that, which usually in the later afternoon it just starts to pick up a little bit because of the heat and sun and everything, uh, you will... Uh, It'll be a little bit harder, but Sunday morning, when we flip the order, that should give you, 
you know, there won't be any advantage as far as the weather went. So we're just trying to make it fair for everybody. We wanted to, to everybody have the same advantage, fly into the, the best conditions you can. So that's why we're doing it that way this year. On... Okay. Wind limits. We as a committee last year at the NSC, or was it year four? Year four last at the NSC set a, a limitation on, like Pampa says, 15, 15 mile an hour consistent wind, we will call the contest. Okay. I was talking with Tony Stillman today and found out they can't do that and we can't, we can't have our limitations. We set a limit at the NSC of saying 12 mile an hour winds, we will, call the, we will call the event. No more flying. Tony brought to light, and I'm, I've never read this before, but he says it's in the general, which the general takes precedence over the rest of the, the rules in the book. Get this, 40 mile an hour. How much? 40 mile an hour. 40. Now that, that was probably put, put in there back in the days when they were flying rocks on 30 foot string and calling it a scale, you know. But, now, he says they're going to go through this. And here's the thing too. It's, it is still a rule, or still in place in, in the rule book, that you can be declared the AMA national champion by placing in two events in free flight, control line, and RC. You get a big trophy and $1,000. That's in the book. So if somebody wants to call upon that, <laughs> fly six events, I don't know. Anyway, they're going to go through the book and they're going to do some rewriting. And I think some of us in here are going to be part of that uh, tiptoeing, tiptoeing through all that. So there's a lot of stupid stuff. Now, what we're going to do in light of we're not able to call it, he said what we can do is if the weather becomes iffy, we can take a vote between all the pilots. Let's say 23 pilots say, I'm not going to fly, let's call it off. One pilot says, no, I'm going to go ahead and fly. The contest still has to go on. Okay, but if you do fly and he's flying in wind conditions, you got a good flight the day before, he ain't got a chance of beating you anyhow. Let him fly. If you call the contest, it's still the first day's numbers count. Right, right. So it doesn't matter. But it's just that we can't, we can't use a, a wind number or a figure to say, okay, we're calling it right here. If one person is unhappy with that, then, you know. He can fly. Go out and crash you. Yeah, so. He's still got to beat you. He's still got to beat you. still got to beat you. like the NASCAR race. Okay. On the judges, so that we don't carry this out into nitpicking every little thing, this is the judges' uh, consensus on, on this. Here's what they're looking for tomorrow. Realism. Realism of your particular aircraft, how the real one flies, and how you are going to demonstrate that particular aircraft in, in flight. There's no reason to go through and nitpick all the little things because uh, if you've done your homework and you know how that particular airplane performs, then you know that's what they're looking for. So they, three of the four of them are real pilots, so it's not like you're going to pull the wolves over a lot of, the, a lot of their eyes. Rogers probably has learned everything that's got a, got a prop on it. So anyway, they're looking for realism. Okay, so if you've got a 182, you take off burning down the runway, and it takes you three laps to get up, I think they're going to figure out that that's not a way without flies. And likewise, if you're flying a Tony or something like that, you know, uh, they, they can tell the difference there. So they're looking for realism on your particular, yes. Touch and go. Tail wheel down, tail wheel up. Tail wheel Three down. wheels always on the ground. Tail wheel on the ground. Three wheels on the ground. That is that is the way that it's that it's understood now, and that's been a that's been a, a source of conversation over okay, the years. Okay, in full scale. If, huh? you're, if you're in full scale, you're doing a check out in a tail wheel airplane. They don't touch. The yes, tail sir. They do okay, not. here, 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 here. I have, I have. I have two guys. Well, Will Hinton's not Can here. Can I just say what I'm going to say? Yeah, go you're ahead. not current. You're not current in the tail airplane until you do three full stop landings. Wheel landings do not count. T in tell me, instructor. Airplane. You're right. That's exactly right. Okay, but like I say, that's that's a rule. That's right. You guys right. Tailwheel's got to touch the. Now, Will Hinton was a flight instructor too. Taught people how to fly. 
And his explanation was you didn't have to have it down because he, he didn't want to have it down because he wanted to teach his students how to ground control on a touch and go. The last 40 but, mile an hour is the hardest 40 mile an hour, folks. Any yeah, well, I, I'm going by what Roger said because I'm not a flight instructor. He was, and, uh, and he's, he's still alive. Okay, so tell Will down. there you go. Tell, <laughs> tell Will down. Tell uh, Will down. Okay, uh, so they're looking for realism. And here's the thing. The thing about scale, and a lot of you already know this, I'm preaching to the choir, is if you have a question about something, whether it's your static or whether it's your flight, and you're wondering why you got a particular score, I would suggest going up to the judge and saying, do you remember why you scored me this? Because we know that scale is something that we go home and we add to so that the next year it's in better shape or either I go home and I practice what I've been told because you come back next year, you're going to be flying in front of the same judges, just a new event director. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Lord. Uh, so that's, that's where you need to go with that. So pull them off, not while they're judging, but maybe during break time or lunch time. Take, take your score with, them, with you and say, can you help me out on this? And it's not, you know, not to be mean or anything about it or a know-it-all or whatever, but they'll make good suggestions on how you can improve your flying and also improve your model because actually the best way to do it, the way, the way that I try to do it, is I want somebody else to look at my airplane before I even come to competition. And even with that being said, Rob, Roger still bangs me for stuff that, <laughs> that he's already looked at. Alan, mm -hmm. question. Yes. There, there's always some discussion about when you're going to take off, you, you have to stop with the engine running before you take off, correct? Yes. Right. Yes. Yeah. Right. Once again, realism. I don't think you pull up, you shut the engine off, and then you do whatever you do. The realism is through all your maneuvers through the freaking flight. Okay. What, what's the penalty if you don't? Well, the, the, the judges will, there's, there's nothing said in black and white as to say three is the number that you'll be docked. It, it is according to them because that there comes under realism. Well, in our contest, they wanted to disqualify a person for not making a standing start. Well, I don't think disqualification is in order, but no, hey. I'm just saying yeah. you can go to extremes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So what's the penalty? What's the penalty? Yeah. Well, I think it's going to be a substantial markdown, but it's not going to be a DQ. Then I have another question. Okay. The rules say you have to have a spinner, same size and color and shape. And if for some reason you can't use the spinner, what's the penalty? A couple points or disqualification? But here's the way it's supposed to be done, and I think you know this, Frank, is when you go up to static, yeah. you can have your static prop and spinner on. Whatever you're going to compete with, whatever you're going to fly with, that prop and acorn nut or spinner has to be laying there with the model, so that's the way that's supposed to go. It's the way I understand the rule book. So I didn't, I didn't see that happen today. No, you, don't, you don't use that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I, I spinner you have to have for static, and then you have the one that you're going to fly with. Right. Yeah. yeah. Not but, the prop. Uh, Not the prop. No, it's the no, spinner. Just the spinner. Not the prop. Okay. Yeah, just I'll back up on that. You're right. You're right. So, what is the penalty? Up to the judges. judges. Up to the judges. On one of mine, I use a, I use a long acorn nut because I I have to. It won't fit inside the spinner for for my CG. To be, to be right, but I, I don't know. Well, what I'm getting at, if you kept throwing a spinner, so you say, well, I'll fly it without the spinner, then what's the penalty? That's up to the judges. Hmm? That's up to the judges. I don't, I don't know if that's ever come up before. Hey, Alan. Okay. Yes. If you think about it, the judges are judging the flying, not the airplane. When you go through static, you're judging the airplane. It's good. So how could somebody judge in the airplane fly the judge? I personally don't see that there's a deduction in that part of it. Like he said, right. static is already right. over with. Right. Right. So the appearance of the airplane, mm -hmm. uh, the appearance of the airplane is already set. Yeah, the judge is not judging. How about Richard? 
Yes. No deduction. So you don't want to fly the spinner on one of your airplanes? It does have to have an acorn net on it, though, around it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So that is, I know that's a mess. Okay. One last thing. Grand Champion. It has been, it has been different, different ways of, of crowning the Grand Champion for control line scale. It's been done different ways in the past. This is the way that we're going to do it this year because we've done it this way a few other times. It comes out of sports scale, the Grand Champion does. <clears throat> now, theoretically, you can win sports scale but not be the Grand Champion. Now, here's the way that works. Grand Champion is the total score of all four flights and your static score. That is the Grand Champion. Now, to win sports scale, all you need is the two best scores and your static. So the total score on those three items, you are sports scale champion. So once again, all four scores count in to the grand champion. And so that is the person who will be crowned grand champion. So he's the guy going to fly in the wind. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I know a lot of times we come, we get a good score, we'll, we'll say we'll pass because we're not going to change the, 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 the more iffy weather right now. Well, okay, you can do that, and you can do that on Sunday too, but if there's a guy that comes, whether he puts up a score of 20 or 30, makes no difference. If he's got four scores and they're the highest, he's the grand champion. So that is the way that that's going to happen. Our award ceremonies are going to be with... The RC guys over where we've done static today. So we will be doing all our proceedings. I think they're wanting to do something Olympic style. I'm, I'm not exactly sure on that. So anyway, that is, that is how the Grand Champion is going to be. The High Static Awards will be given out tomorrow night at the banquet. If you don't have a banquet ticket, I still have a couple left outside of that. Anybody got, oh, and here's one other thing, too. I'll forget it if I don't say it, Roger. It's already trying to come out. <laughs> Be attentive to the time schedule. I know when, when the first, first group is up, say, from about 7.15 to 10.15, you know, the air, if, if, if the air does any changing, it's going to start changing about that time. So people later on down, pilots later on down in the order, okay, we would like to get it done as rapidly as we can, at least the first round, as rapidly as we can so that everybody has as good a condition as they can have, okay? So if you're up, it's not really our responsibility to remind you. It will be announced over the PA. It will be up on the big tote board, you have a handout, <clears throat> you know your flight order, what circle you should be in. I suggest in aerobatics what we do is we have the top, we have the three that are lined up here ready to go out. I suggest that you, you watch your time frame. We are going to do what we're supposed to do at the Nationals. If you miss your time slot, you will go down three spots. If you miss that one, you've missed a round. You have three attempts for two scores each day. When an attempt is called, they'll mark that. You will go down three spots, <clears throat> and you'll be figured in there. That's why it's important to watch the flight order, and we'll keep it as up to date as we can up at the scoring table and everything. But it's important for you because sometimes later on in the day you never know if you're still in the same order, if somebody has dropped out or if somebody's taking a temp or something like that. So your flight can creep up on you if you're not aware. Okay, so what you just gotta do is you just, you know, we're here to fly airplanes, we're here to compete, and so you need to take it upon yourself to know when, where, what time and all that because once again, there is a time limit, it's prescribed in the book, of how much time you've got to get out to the circle after the last guy has just walked off, got his equipment off, 
You have a time limit there. You got a time limit to get in the air. If you have a problem out in the circle, we are not going to do like we've done in the past. We're not going to wait 15 minutes for you to get your airplanes straightened out. You have, and this is not to be mean. This is just, like I say, these guys that are later on down in the list, you know, they would like to have good air too. So we just need to be responsible for our stuff. If it doesn't work, pull it off, take an attempt, and then we'll go on from there. Is it 7.15 or 8.15? 7.15 is first flight up. Okay. We can, I heard 8.15 at one point. Well, that, that's what I was asking. On, the handout was gospel, okay? Uh, I figure that we can get the first round in on both circles by 11. Yeah. And I think that's about the time if the weather is going to do you any type of changing, that's when it's going to start changing, okay? So... Maybe you can answer this question for me, and it's been a question that I've had for 40 years. Three attempts for two officials. Actually, it's one attempt for two flights, correct? Or is it you can attempt to fly three times and only put up two officials? You understand what I mean? If you, if you have two flights and you say, well, I'm going to take an attempt, you can't take another attempt after that to make no. another flight. No, no, no. So it's one attempt for two flights. That's the way it's, is that right? one missed time. If you. that works for you, Robert, that's fine. <laughs> you get one you, missed time. You get one miss. That's you get, right. You get three walks out in the circle, that's it. Okay. <laughs> I Take it however you want. Yeah. 40 years, I've been thinking, well, wait a minute, that ain't three yeah, attempts. You only, get, you only get one missed time. You only get one pass, that's all. Okay. But you'll, you had have, you have those three to get two scores. Not that I ever so, take one. You fly but. the Willie McCool racing circles? Yes. McCool centers. Uh... What, what's the prediction for tomorrow? Tomorrow, from what I've seen so far, is they're talking five to seven. Variable. Yeah. How long that lasts, I don't know. I did see that Sunday, they're talking about midday is supposed to get up around 10 because there is weather moving in Sunday night. How late Sunday, I don't know, but that the weather will be changing Sunday afternoon somewhere in there. I mean, it'll still be flyable. Five to 15 miles away. Yeah. 50% chance of rain. Yeah. So we will, like I say, we can't do nothing about the weather, so whatever happens, happens, and we'll deal with it. So Make everyone count. Mm -hmm. That's right. Make everyone count. So, have your stuff ready tomorrow? Okay, thank you. Mike, have our stuff ready tomorrow. Alan, quick, quick question. Yes, sir. Why was the scale moved up a month? Does anyone know? Right. Okay. Real quick on this story, and then we're going to be done. It's fine. It's fine. Okay. There were a lot of variables that entered into it. Number one, AMA was trying to dance around a lot of different things that were going on in month one, okay? Nobody wants to pay $200 for a $50 hotel room, which is what they were doing. Uh, Fourth July weekend, it came into the play. Uh, AMA summer camp, which came into play. Uh, and then, the, really, the thing that was deciding it all is AMA offered us two choices, and neither one of them was, was with Control Line Week. That, okay, and then to sidestep off of that is because the RC guys could not tighten up their pattern for their larger airplanes to do their competition. Up on the other end. If, if, they, if they flew over the road, they were dq would LPAD, guys want to practice up there, and of course they have the welcome cut fly off on Saturday. For what reason, I don't know, but anyway, they do that. So to make them happy, to make everybody else happy, that's why this happened. Now... What we're doing, what the RC guys are doing back there on Site 4 is a AMA specially prepared that strip back there because that's where Urcha has their 2,000 helicopter people come in. Uh, so they rolled it, irrigated it, talked to Mike Barber and John Wilco. They loved the place. They, they had the jets there. That was going to be the deciding factor if it would work for them. The jets flew off and landed. They said, yeah, this is fine. So they're going to use that from now on. Now, that takes all these other variables away, at least the main one, which was the overfly from the state center over the LPAD. So we've already turned in our request for next year that we want a certain date, and Control Line and RC will be back together again. And, and we'll so put it back on with Control Line. Are we, are we flying the same place we did last year? Yes. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay. Yeah. So once again, see you early in the morning. I'm going to go home and get some rest. And... Uh, have your planes ready for pull test. Oh, I will be pull testing. Guys, there's 
from a judging standpoint, there was about four or five people here that had three views that a six-year-old kid could have drawn because there was absolutely no detail to those little three views whatsoever. And what that does for us, that means that we have to go look at your pictures. Your pictures do not show a lot of the detail due to the fact of the way they're situated. And so it makes it, it's, it's hard on you. You're the one that suffers. You need to have a better three view. And, and you guys know who you are because it's a very simple little three views. There was about four or five of them that come through our, our uh, judging thing. And it makes it awful hard for us to judge you fairly. So get your ass together and get some good three views. Help you Richard, out. if I'm not mistaken, in FAI, don't they dock you for your documentation being inaccurate? Not complete. Uh, if it doesn't meet their requirements, they dock you for outline, like don't give you anything. Oh, okay. Well, we're, we're not going to dock know, you. Yeah. It's just the fact we're, we're, we're rewriting the scale itself. rules. I wanted the documentation to get points, but that didn't go through. Well, I'll tell you what. We're going to tiptoe through that stuff during the winter months and uh, probably be sending a lot of you guys emails seeking uh, your opinions on things uh, because we're the ones that need to, well, we've already done a lot of rewriting in that. But as far as the general rules go, a lot of you have been around a lot longer than I have, so we need uh, some sensible people to write these things and get rid of some of this other stuff like going to jail if you spit on the sidewalk, yes. <laughs> We're done. You're done. It's fine. It's good.